we want to actually connect the free energy delta G to your delta S universe. So in the very beginning, we say delta S systems plus your delta S surroundings. They give you the delta S of universe. That's actually the definition we got in the very beginning. Let's look at this specific reaction, okay? So H2O in the liquid form that goes into the vapor form. But we actually can describe these things using this very general uh, definition we got. If this is going to happen, one thing we can know for sure is that your delta S surrounding will do something. If you want to actually make your water going from the liquid form to the gas form, what's going to happen is actually your surrounding is actually provide heat. Okay, you heat your water, therefore it can evaporize. So for water to evaporize, okay, we know you need to actually provide that much heat, right? So from the measurement, you know how much heat you need to actually provide to your system so that the water in your system feel the heat, have the energy, therefore it evaporizes. So you know that's how much heat you are going to dump in into your system. And because it is dumping into your system, to the surrounding, that means actually it's going to consume that much heat so that it can go to the system. And then eventually you need to divide it by your temperature so that it becomes the entropy, right? So this term can be rewritten as this. And then this actually, we just write the things again. Okay, delta S universe. What we do next is actually we multiply this on both sides. And then what we're going to have is actually negative T delta S system plus delta H evaporations is going to equal to negative T times delta S universe. This turns Okay, negative T times your delta S universe was then be defined as your delta G of your system. And then left hand side is going to become delta H evaporations, okay, minus T times your delta S of your system. This Equations I just circle, okay, represents the delta G equations for the evaporation process. Later on, people actually generalize these equations, not just for the evaporation. For any chemical reactions, you can write the delta G in a very similar form. So that you got this delta G equals delta H minus T delta S term. So this is the most important equations of this chapter. Delta G equals to delta H minus T delta S. This is the equation you really need to actually memorize it. The important thing is actually that previous we say if your delta S universe is positive, then you have spontaneous reaction. Since your delta G is negative T times your delta S universe, temperature is always positive. Therefore, your delta G for a spontaneous reaction will always be negative. So if today, for a chemical reaction, if you tell you the G naught of your reactants and product, then you can calculate your delta G naught, which is actually your G naught product minus your G naught reactant. Then this thing is going to become negative, right? So here, the condition one we have is actually your G naught product is smaller than your G naught reactant. Delta G naught means free energy differences from your product and reactant, right? It's actually G naught product minus your G naught reactant. If in this case we know that delta G naught is going to become negative, okay, and this is actually the time you are going to have spontaneous reaction, okay? You expect that to happen. It means actually you are going to have more product to form. On the other hand, if your delta G naught product is larger than the delta G naught of your reactant, your delta G naught again is your G naught of product minus your G naught of your reactant. It will be positive. Then it is a non-spontaneous reaction toward the product side. But what it means is actually 
the reverse reaction will be spontaneous. Okay, so this actually tells you, okay, in other words, you are going to have more reactants. Previous, we always tell you, okay, delta S universe, if it is positive, then you have spontaneous reaction. Okay. Right now, you also need to remember if your delta G or delta G naught is negative, then you have spontaneous reaction. Okay, so these are the two key things that you need to actually memorize for this chapter. One thing you're going to see a lot in your homework is that it asks you when the spontaneity of the reaction is going to change. What it really means is actually they want you to know if your delta G naught is equal to zero, okay, that's the point where your spontaneity is going to change, right? Because if it's larger than zero, it's non-spontaneous for your delta G naught, right? But if it's actually less than zero, then it's spontaneous. Then the delta G naught, if it equals zero, is actually a transition point, okay? Now the question is actually, what is that point? What is delta G naught equals to zero? It's neither spontaneous nor non-spontaneous, right? So a very important concept that you need to know when you see this delta G equals to zero, it actually tells you that your system is at equilibrium. Okay, so you can go both ways. Let's refresh our memory again. For a spontaneous process, your delta S universe need to be larger than zero. Your delta G need to be negative. Your system will be actually at equilibrium if your delta G equals to zero. Okay, so those are the three very important physical concepts that you need to have for this chapter.